Well, it's three point podcast time again, everybody. Episode 282. We're moving right on through the numbers, and it's presented by Memorial Healthcare Wellness Center. Check out memorialhealthcare.org for everything offered. Sign up for the October 21st Go Green, Go Blue 5K Run Walk, and you'll have a lot of fun with that. And we also want to thank our other partners AZ Branding Solutions, Jacobs Insurance Agency. Corey Shook and Associates Real Estate Services, Nelson House Funeral Homes, Rivals Tap House and Grill. Check out their brand new menu and Success Group Mortgage and Servicing. Got another special guest tonight for our prep spotlight presented by Jacobs Insurance Agency, and that's Chesanine head coach Matt Walter will join us. We'll talk about the resurging Chesanine Indians and a couple of their big games this season. But as we always do, we, we do a little quick catch up of what's been going on with you fellas. Yeah, I was going to ask you guys um, how you well, we'll talk about college football a little later, but how you enjoyed that slate yesterday, just a loaded college football slate. But it was a perfect day. Jared, you know how it goes. Ted, you, we've talked about it a number of times to be at work. It's if if I have to be at work on a day like that, because the multiple TVs, I, I know I tweeted out a picture to have all those games on. I had to do a WNBA game or recording on Sunday night. I just got back doing a WNBA playoff game. So we had all the NFL games up. It's just, it, it just makes me think like it kind of stinks to be at work for some of those, you know, busy days of football. But if you have to be, there's so much to watch right now. I mean, I know the Tigers are out of it. So we've kind of tuned out of baseball a little bit, college football, college, or uh, NFL. And, you know, there's just so much going on right now. It's this and loaded school. podcast. Obviously high school too. So right, we're going right, to be getting right. into that a little bit. So. Yep. Yeah. yeah, I actually worked all day yesterday too, Matt. And yep. I don't, I actually notice is like when there's a slate or there's, and I work today too, NFL football, college football. If there's some sort of like distraction going while I'm working, like it almost like hones me in. It makes it feel like I'm right. not working. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. and, then, and as a result, my work seems to be a lot better. I, I don't yep. know. That's something I've noticed over the last couple of weekends. I've been working during these, these big time football weekends, but, uh, yeah, not a whole lot for catch up for me. I mean, this is kind of this is kind of lame, but I'm just going to tell you what I've been dealing with this week. Uh, really, I've been dealing with this since I've moved into a, my own apartment the last two, or really since college, last three years. Uh, laundry. I mean, <laughs> dude, it's it's becoming a serious issue. It's to the point where I'll go. You know, one, I hate the. I anytime I have to share washers or in dryers, even in college at Grand Valley when they were the primo. Uh, quality, it just grosses me out. It makes me want to park yeah. every time. So that's why usually whenever I have a chance, I take my laundry to my parents. But sure. I've been working, so I haven't been able to. Uh, so I had to drop off my laundry today, and it washes. I notice there's clothes in the dryer when I go and start washing my clothes. Hour passes by the time my clothes are washed. Clothes are still in the dryer. Now my, my clothes are just sitting in the washer at this point, um, clogging the washers up. Another hour rolls by, I go check again. Still, clothes are in there. Another hour rolls by, I go check again. The clothes are still in there. By this point, it's been three and a half hours. My clothes are just soaked. It's grossing me out so much. It's like really yep. fucking pissing me off. I don't know why I just dropped the F bomb, but whatever. <laughs> I did. It really was, though. It's like there's very few things that are like just pressure points on making me rage and doing all my laundry just to have it sit and soak in that dirty water with yeah. everybody else's clothes just was grossing me out mm -hmm. to the point I took out the clothes that I finally after four hours I took out the clothes that were in the dryer and I threw them onto the ground basically and said <laughs> dude I'm done it I'm done I waited five hours I'm done was I in the wrong there well what, I, 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 I gotta ask a little clarification because you kind of lost me a little bit so you have you did a load of wash and then you put it in the dryer right no, I, so no. there's three washers, right? There's three dryers. There's three washers. Okay. I had three separate washer loads oh. going whites, towels, colors. Gotcha. Whatever. I got gotcha. you. Okay. Yeah. No, I think there, there's an unwritten rule. Maybe, you know, you, like you said, you gave him an hour, gave him two. When it starts approaching three, four, five hours and you're taking up the dryers. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm tossing here. If there's not an empty laundry basket waiting, I don't know. I'm throwing them on top of the dryer or on the floor or something. You know, that's, I'll be on it. That's the worst part about the whole apartment sharing the laundry room oh. situation. Mm -hmm. It's hell, man. It's yeah. hell. The it's disgusting. I clean the the, the like. There's a little lint trap. Yeah. Every time I put my clothes in it, I open it up. It's full of lint. It's disgusting. <laughs> I you think it it's out. like other people's lint is the yeah, thing you think just, about. Yeah. Dude, it, like I'm telling you, it gave me the willies today. 
yeah. having my clothes sit in that washer that long. And maybe yeah. it was like, you know, I might just rewash them at this point. Like this is so freaking gross. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's what that's what you deal with, Ted, that you don't have to deal with now that you're you know living the beach life, retired. <laughs> well, and, yeah, I haven't had I haven't had to do uh coin laundry in a long time. So <laughs> that's something for you to look forward to, you know. The next yeah. apartment you get one that has uh like a combo washer dryer yeah. built right in one of the closets. That's the way to go. I was gonna say, you know, college is different, you know, whether you're in dorms or living in on campus housing or you know, whatever. That that's part of I, I feel like college life is the the shared laundry rooms. Um after that though, I feel like I had like an epiphany. Maybe it was a situation like Jared's, mm -hmm. you know, where I had an apartment with a shared place and I had a similar, you know, people who either wouldn't clean them, they'd leave their stuff in, or it would just be nasty and dirty. It was basically like I'm I'm never if as long as I'm renting, I'm never renting a place where I can't have my own washer and dryer. That's right. just that's just part of it, you know. Multiple bathrooms. I never want a, a one. Mm -hmm. I guess if you're living by yourself, that's different. But you want multiple bathrooms. You want your own laundry. There's just some of those things like you're gonna check off because it is. I mean, you know, you, you hope people are taking care of the stuff and not throwing just absolutely disgusting clothes in the washer. But you do think about that. Like you're washing your clothes in other people's lint and like yeah, I know. filth kind Here, of. So here's I guess yeah. the thing that bothers me the most is is that this was not a one time occurrence. Dude, this is every time I do my laundry, people's yeah. clothes sit in the dryer. Get them out. That's I don't rude. get it. it get that is out. completely yeah. rude, man. Yep. Yeah. I can just picture Jared uh in that laundry room going off like Ryan Day pissed off about <laughs> Lou Holtz. Just we'll get into that, man. I think I we'll have we very differing opinions on that, on how that went down. Oh, man. Let's, you know, I'm just going to say my comment on it real quick, just real quick. Uh -huh. Here's my problem with why people are bitching. So you notice the the out the backlash from Ryan Day making those comments about Lou Holtz. All right. the commentary, and Ted, I specifically want your opinion on this as an older guy. Yeah. All the commentary are people bitching about at Ryan Day, like, why are you making fun of this 86-year-old guy? He's so old. Why are you even punching down at this old guy? Isn't it better that he treats Lou Holtz like like the human that he is? And he's still sharp. And go at him the same yeah, way. What if yeah, whoever uh, said that? Then, uh, then people shitting on him. Like it's almost more embarrassing the people that are saying like he's you know you're you're punching down on him. Like dude, he's 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 still got everything there. Yeah. Well, I mean, he made the comment. Lou made the comment. Ryan Day obviously took offense to it. Uh, when I when I saw the interview and, you know, I've, I've got my own opinion on the whole thing, it just showed me that Ryan Day is feeling the pressure yeah. as head coach of Ohio State. He's lost two years in a row to Michigan. Now he's getting all this negative publicity that, you know, he's really – let's see what he can do with his own players, you know, and not Urban Myers. I, mean, I, I just saw it as, man, the pressure just got to him. And, hell, he probably would have lost that game if Notre Dame would have had – 11 damn guys on the team on the field at the time, but that's just another thing. Yeah, we can, uh, I'll give a few more thoughts. We'll, we'll bring it up again in our college football yeah. chat, but I, I figured we were going to bring that up and I figured <laughs> we would also all not see it uh, eye to eye. Same. Also that that's how it goes on this that's podcast. It. So Jared, you might want to rewash your clothes is what it comes down to. Yeah. That's what it they, all comes down to. Well, they're in the dryer <laughs> right now. So it's, you know, the, we'll find out after the pod, I'm kind of half worried that I'm going to show up and my clothes are going to be so thrown on the ground because this person's <laughs> finally going to come and realize that their clothes are done. We better yeah. not go long. We better not go long. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> yeah. Actually, that's kind of ironic. You say that. We, I am going to go long. They're going to be sitting in there about 30, 40 minutes after they're done. So <laughs> See, wow. like the, maybe, maybe the, the courteous thing to do would be if you know it's going to be, leave a note. Put a little note on there and yeah. say, sorry, I'm, I'm going to be back in an hour what? or two, something like that. Yeah, I mean, or there's going to be a basket. Sort of solution, right? It right. happens every, like there's something that my management at my building and all these other buildings had the same issues in college. How can we get this solved? Mm -hmm. I, I don't know. Let's put our brains together on that. Wow. Well, let's ponder it while we take a little break here. Let's take a break <laughs> and we'll come back and talk uh, a little Chesanine football with head coach Matt Walter on the prep spotlight right after this. Well, next up on the podcast, it is our prep spotlight presented by Jacobs Insurance Agency. And we like to talk to some of the coaches in the area. And we've got uh, the great head coach of the Chesapeake Indians has turned the program around now in his second year, Matt Walter. And man, a couple big wins this year. Let's start right there. When 
you know, did you guys really start believing in yourselves uh, after that new Lothrop game? Oh, absolutely. And I think even last year when we had our first winning season, our guys started buying in and the younger, you know, the younger underclassmen started buying in. And then our staff is amazing at, at getting these kids prepared. Like my defensive coordinator, my offensive coordinator, getting them ready for new Lothrop was, I mean, on point. Everything we knew it was coming and we knew they couldn't stop our, our zone offense and, and, and it showed, and same thing with Montrose. We, we knew it was coming, and our defense, I think, held them to 109 yards, two yards rushing. So, I mean, these these kids are locked in, and and they're they're ready to go. Yeah. How does it yeah, feel so we, eating those, um, like, top programs like a Montrose, like a New Lothrop? I mean, the last few years against New Lothrop, really for the last 10, 15 years against New Lothrop, it's been some pretty lopsided losses. I mean, how does it feel to kind of knock off those premier, you know, name brand programs? Well, it just shows a kid that hard work pays off and they can do it. Um, sometimes I always tell them they play against the name on the jersey and not the person inside the jersey. And when you get beat so many times and, and beat pretty bad, you kind of get that in your mindset. And these kids are not in that mindset. They're the most competitive kids I know. Um, even in flag football, they're competing against each other, coaching with the little kids and, and all, everything they do, they compete. Yeah. Yeah, and it, it, we've, we've talked about it before with coaches we've had on is building a program from all the way down to first, yep. second, third graders, you know, kind of establishing that full program. And speaking of, you know, a program, we were talking uh, before we started recording, you know, so the three of us are Corona guys and uh, the I graduated in 2003. The Chessening that I remember was watching Ryan Brady win a state title in 1998 and then in 2001 the state title that Chesanine won, uh, you know, was a big deal for mid Michigan. I mean, Chesanine was the premier program in our area. That's what almost like the standard you wanted to play up to Chesanine standard. So I remember in 2002, my senior year, after you guys had won that state title, it was a huge deal coming in. Chesanine came to Corona and, and we were able to win, um, you know, being able to beat Chesanine defending state state champs, you know, it, it was a big deal. Since then, you know, Chesanine's kind of had some bumps in the road, um, made the playoffs in 2020, but before then hadn't made the playoffs since 2007. I don't say that to say anything bad about Chesanine. I say that to say, like, how do you reestablish that premier Chesanine program that, you know, Ted and I remember that you've probably heard a lot about or you just remember? How do you kind of get the kids believing the, the community, you know, the coaches, everything like that? How do you reestablish what Chesanine was? Well, when I came in, I wanted to make sure we were going to be our own team. You know, we're, yeah. we're really happy. We're really proud of the 98, 2001. And if we can get to that point, absolutely. But we wanted to kind of be our own identity, okay. um, bring it back a little bit, bring pride. So I wanted to make sure the community was supporting us. And so we tried to go out and do a lot of stuff with the community. Um, you know, and, and anytime anyone wants to come to practice to watch us from our community, not from another team, but yeah. they can come watch us and see what we're doing. And, you know, just because sometimes people, you know, will will go out and say they're not doing this or not doing that. But, hey, come watch us. Come watch us in practice. See what we do. See, you know, and, and our guys do a great job of getting out to community events. You know, we were out at Garber for Stuff the Bus. We, we go read to the elementary every Friday. We do all this stuff to try to get, you know, involved in the community you you sure. build that tight-knit um you know with the community and and if they're supporting you you know good things are happening obviously yeah. and 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 you know good obviously times are good right now yeah. um so but the support has been amazing even when last year we lost a couple games blowouts to montrose and new Oldup, they were still supportive they they seen the progress and and that's these kids have worked so hard for it and and it's starting to show now so patience is virtue Mm -hmm. Yep. You guys are going to have your chance at a little bit of revenge uh, next week uh, against Ovid Uh Just last year, you guys kind of broke the, you know, I think it was seven straight years. You guys didn't have a winning record. You guys got the five and four last year, snapped that streak. Uh, you guys are already three and oh in the MMAC conference. You got three more games coming up against Ovid LC, Duran, Lakeville. Is that something you're starting to think about? Is hey, maybe let's make a push here for this conference title? Is that one of your guys' goals before the season? Or where are you guys at in that sense? Uh, we're going to beat OE. That's our goal right now. Tonight, that was yeah. our goal. We we watch film and we're on to OE. You know, that's what that's what's so great about these guys is after a big win, Montrose and New Ulta, we're celebrating, we're happy. We come in Sunday, we're locked on. Let's get ready for the next game. And all these kids are focused. 
Um, and, and yeah, obviously our, our goals were, my first goal was to have a winning record, then move into playoffs and then conference. Well, if you move into playoffs in this league, more than likely you've got a chance to win the conference. So mm -hmm. that's our goal in the end is let's win the conference. Let's get to the playoffs. But right now our goal today is we're going to beat OE next week. And, and like you said about revenge, we, <laughs>